Clayton. Hello. Look who I found, guys. <laughs> it's Sharina Clayton. Clayton. Well, Clayton. I can't even say it. <laughs> I was so okay. excited. Oh, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Good. Um, we, hi, guys. Hi. This is this is Sharina's first Facebook Live with yes. me. So we're, very, we're just talking about it. We're very excited. I feel really a little bit unsettled. <laughs> what is happening? That I'm you don't know. About. You're live and I have complete control and you just have to roll with it. Okay. <laughs> I surrender, my love. I surrender. Take all over me. <laughs> well, welcome. We're so excited to have you. Oh, thank you. And thank you for taking some time out from all the, the Logies fun. I know you guys are all down there with all the pre Logies activities. So. Yeah, with my tea. <laughs> Yeah, the first thing, the no. first thing that Trina was like, I need a tea. That's the first thing I need is a tea, guys. <laughs> no, I'm such like an old woman sometimes, and I have no shame about that. First thing that comes off is my heels, and Danielle Cormack has often commented on the fact that when I sit down at the Logies, it, the first thing that comes off is my shoes. heels. My shoes, because I've got like desert feet, right? Like I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bush kid, so no shoes fit. That, you know, that that birth, that girth of it. Um, and so, like, often my feet are kind of crammed in. So I'm, I'm in a happy place with bare feet. So, so often when you see that panning and it looks a beautiful gown on top of it, usually I'm, I've got bare feet, feet underneath it. it. That's why you need to wear a long gown all the time. I have, yes, and I do. <laughs> and then I'm running off to the toilet because in the Logies, right, you've got, what, 10 minutes or maybe, no, less than that, five minutes to get a wee break. And when you've got layers of dress, that's a lot to try and like pull up yeah. and make sure that nothing and if there's goes other in the people toilet. In there too. Oh my gosh, and there's a huge lot line and people are pampering and, and so you're just like, guys, I need a wee. Like it shouldn't actually take that long to wee. Like just like <laughs> I think I'm oversharing, but I don't care. We love it. We love it. <laughs> this is um, what we do. And so, like, you hold me, like, it's quicker to run to the bathroom and then run back. And that's why I often wear very long dresses so that no one notices. And they don't because I'm just flying, you know, like a girl. all these, like, like, these ladies just walking. Struggling, just like, and you're just like, pshum, like pshum, pshum. <laughs> I'm a wee ninja. What about this? This is I haven't even had kids. This and I'm is a wee like Logie's tip 101, guys. Yeah. Wear bare feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah. Forget it, like gel help. cushions and band aids and like whatever bare feet. Do you know? I would love for someone to invent a non-destructive, non-painful heel. I don't know. Like it just it's it's almost like there's some days where if I haven't worn heels for ages, I I really struggle to walk the next day. Because I just it just I'm pulls sad. my back, and I've got boobs, yeah. So it's a constant balancing act. Women with breasts, like you understand that, like you know, not only that, but just and and then you're walking the red cup and it's just you're posing in these awkward positions, and you know, you're in it, the standing up, and then the hand on the hip. Yeah, just just making sure you're getting all the jewelry that you're wearing and the designer, and the, uh, it's not. A, whereas guys just just can wear suits. There's often times where I think maybe we should all just wear suits, suits. one year. You know what Silly said the other day? That you should all wear different types of suave teal suits and cover a teal suit brigade. Why the heck did... Who... Really, Celia? Like how they were teal? <laughs> She's like all teal in all designer suits. <laughs> and then it'd be yes. like a teal brigade yes. of suits down the red carpet. I know why the idea got squashed. <laughs> I love you, Anyway, that's we... a great idea, though. <laughs> but maybe not in teal. Maybe not all black. Maybe black. Uh, maybe with teal, teal more... dyes. <laughs> <laughs> teal knickers. Yeah. You know, the teal... Yeah, that's it. And then you can just just do a little side. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've gone. We've gone so far off track. It's ridiculous. Yes. Let's let's Sorry, get God. straight into the Fox Tell Five. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, yeah. Let's go straight into Foxtel 5. Okay, <clears throat> this is where it gets serious. What is your favourite Foxtel series and why? Do you know I'm not a big binger and I really love documentaries. I'm a bit of a nerd. Um, documentaries and um, programmes like The Story of God with Morgan Freeman. I find I'm a huge learner, so I really get enmeshed into anything that I, I can perhaps draw knowledge from or gain wisdom as a result. Um, so I, I really, I don't really have a favourite. Very recently I stood up with my auntie till 1.40 in the morning watching the last episode of Big Little Lies and I found that was fascinating in terms of 
the rhetoric around and the conversation about um, domestic violence and the rhetoric we tell ourselves that, you know, that it, it's okay when it's not. You know, what's, yeah. it, what's this seemingly perfect or this veneer of, you know, uh, what we kind of perceive to be beautiful, perfect lives, but underneath there's just this, uh, you know, wretchedness and viciousness and a lot of darkness. Mm. So that was really fascinating. And I, we were like, okay, maybe we should go to bed. One more episode. Oh, it, it's only seven. It's only seven. Okay, just one more. Okay, no, we have to find out who was the bully and who was, what happened and, and what happens. It gets you like that, though. It's, it's, but I think it, the great thing, too, about Nicole Kidman's character in Celeste yeah. is it really sh breaks down the stigma and the stereotypes around those that are victims of domestic violence. Mm. Or right. Right. Yeah, because she's a seemingly successful, yes. beautiful, yes. happy person. Yes. And you, you know, in this society would be the last person that you would think is being victimised or in that position. Yes. And it breaks that stigma down. But it, it was really interesting because she was very, her whole, her whole self-worth was somehow amalgamated in how people perceived her life. So she was very firm on holding on to the idea or this um, perceptional reality of what people perceived her life to be and how everybody wanted it. And she was, even her best friend, you know, played by Reese Witherspoon, she couldn't confide in and tell the truth like because no she wouldn't did. even be honest with herself. And that was the frustrating thing about, and yet the disheartening and heartbreaking um, uh, conversations about when you're in those situations about how you need to be recognised that there is an issue and then there is a problem and be honest with yourself about where you're at and how you can find the solutions and you're not alone yeah. in those situations. And what was really beautiful was finding that the women, there was a solidarity with the women at, at the end. end. I yeah, thought that was so beautiful. I really love that. I love those the things throughout. Circle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think we don't encourage that enough in our society, certainly not in our uh, film and television. I mean, view, um, what's really f fantastic is, I don't know if anybody's um, watching this. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course people are watching bless, this. Bless. Um, Paul, get putting up with my speaking. Um, is Feud by um, talking about Bette Davis and John yes. Crawford, it's which I really, good really loved. And it was Susan Sarandon who was like, well, how, how, how come you've not worked with this actress before? And she's, she's like, well, normally we haven't had the opportunity because it's usually an actor and an actress. And so it's almost like a, a repetition of the MGM days where, you know, very, where, I mean, we see more of that in the landscape in America, but less so here in Australia, and which I'm hoping that it starts to um, branch out into where we're seeing more women dominating the screens. Yes. <laughs> Unapologetically. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and, you know, what was beautiful and often and still heartbreakingly portrayed in the, in the themes of that, uh, that era of that time is that it's still happening. And, now, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and often, you know, we as women are put with, you know, 55-year-old men who are our husbands. <laughs> <laughs> or that, you know, we get told we're too old after we pass the age of 30. Mm -hmm. Or that we can't be sexual, we can't be in our essence as women unless we adhere to a particular aesthetic or that a particular unrealistic goal of body type or body image or we have to be this, you know, this categorisation of what women should be under this male gaze and uh, as a result I think it's purely because the heads of the networks, the heads of the studios and um, the people in positions of power and authority are often white male men. Yeah. So it's changing the perspective lens and shifting the paradigm and in order to do that it's creating more women being at the forefront of stories as well. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree. Yeah. We, I don't yeah. even think that answers your question. No, you know what, though? <laughs> it's like you answered two questions because, you know, you heard Katrina, that's like my third question. And you so answered what was the second so, question? Second, hang on. What would you tell your teenage self? Oh, just, it's relax. Um, don't put so much pressure on yourself. I think certainly more under the, the era of technology that we're in, um, there seems to be more exposure to unrealistic images that women are, are almost taking on and um, 
feeling that they're not enough, I would tell my younger self that you are enough, that you are beautiful, that you are strong, that you are capable, and that you have everything within you in order to succeed, whatever it is you want to succeed. I would tell my younger self that life is meant to be difficult, it's meant to be challenging, it will kick you in the ass, <laughs> and once you think you have a grasp on it, it will then pull the rug from underneath you, <laughs> and you'll be like, what the fuck is this, oh, what the heck just happened, oh, I just You can say that, <laughs> you're on Wentworth, it's all, right. it's all good, <laughs> we've done um, worse. What the fuck just happened, I thought I knew, I thought I had an idea or a handle about life, I mean, I'm a teenager, oh, you're figuring it out. And I would say not to put so much pressure on yourself to figure it out all quickly because yeah. you're still learning, you're still evolving. And, and to really be honest with yourself, authentic with yourself. Because I spent a lot of my teenage years kind of looking for people's approval and this approval or people pleasing ended up caught sending me on all sorts of knots and ties and needing that validation or outsourcing love and, and, and um, approval. And I just realised so much of my energy and time was wasted as a result, you know, um, adhering to putting on different masks that really wasn't truthful to my own spirit, to my own self. And so as a result, I, I think I would tell my my younger self that it's going to be okay and to, to have fun and to not take life seriously but certainly when life kicks you in the ass and kicks you in the guts and it will and it will continue to do so until you're dead in the ground um, that you don't have to have all the answers and that um, you'll figure it out and to be gentle on yourself as you as you kind of walk on this journey, journey in life yeah. yeah that's lovely I love that um, which might lead into this one, we could segue. What would be your dream role or character to play and why? I would love to be a woman who takes to make prisoners, <laughs> who has a guts and powerhouse of a role I see almost an executive you know almost a CEO and I would love to see women like myself and certainly as a woman of color being included and represented represented into the landscape of where where television is heading in Australia and certainly on the international stage um, I, I am gravitated towards a woman in power because often in, you know, the roles <clears throat> that I have played in the past or I feel that uh, I've gravitated towards have been a power, have, have uh, an uneasing, uneasing relationship with power and have yet to realise their power and kind of are confronted by power. So I would be very interested to see what that space would look like should I step into, into a role that um, is a woman who is powerful and is unapologetic about that. Um, I've yet to see a character of that ilk be played in Australia, but it will happen. Yeah, you know, um, you know, the head of a networking company or production company or a, a law firm. So um, I would just love the opportunity to create to play a, a character like that, and perhaps that's a matter of me creating that opportunity. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I love yes. it. And you do see some of those powerhouse roles in the states. There's lots of different shows that have that. I mean, that have that strong female lead in that sort of executive, I guess, or professional role. But, yeah, you're right. I, you don't see a lot here in Australia. So it's like we are really uncomfortable with the word power, as if it's a dirty, nasty word. But it's more of an access to authority and an access to um, 
being able to be in a position to, to challenge that authority and uh, obliterate the grand narrative as a result. So, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. <laughs> All right, here's the last one, lucky last. What question would you love an interviewer, like myself, to ask you and they never do? I think you had another question about representation. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. I, I didn't know if you wanted to put that in with the other one. Yes, I can go no, back to that. No. If you had the power to change one thing in the entertainment industry, what would it be? One. Just one. <laughs> There's lots of things, but the most, the most prevalent to you. Certainly as an Indigenous woman, certainly as a woman of colour, certainly as a woman who is identified and seen and segregated as other, and uh, often, um, I would like to see more inclusivity. And this is not just ticking a diversity box. This is actually incorporating various voices, various experiences, various perspectives, and various cultures, being having the opportunity to be seen, to be heard, and to be included into the conversation and uh, be able to be at the forefront instead of at the periphery or in the background. So I would love to see a particular fearlessness that the industry almost teeters towards, but almost backtracks at times and is so quick to click uh, or tick the diversity box, whether, whether that's funding or a matter of um, saying to the diversity committee, oh, we have so-and-so and we've got that, so that's our, that's that's our representation. Our so to, to, I really want to just um, <laughs> remove, the, see, remove the walls entirely and almost like rip off the ceiling, but that's not going to happen anytime, anytime soon. Um, I, I suppose each time that I have a conversation with producers, executive heads of networks, that it's removing each brick as I go in order to say, hey, here's, have you thought about this? Here's an opportunity to, to include this voice. Here's an opportunity to have people of colour represented, whether they are black, white, brown or brindle. You know, here's the people of different cultures and not just Indigenous cultures, but people who are African, people who are, uh, um, are, repre are seen and still not heard, are yeah. almost in uh, are said to be included, but they're not. And we have a very hard time with admitting our own whitewashing. We have a very hard time with admitting uh, that we are uncomfortable in doing that. And I would love to see a day where we have a round table of executives, and it really comes down from an executive level down, because you have writers and you have directors who are wanting to be inclusive, but it then comes to a network executive or, or studio level. And so I'm really wanting to get to this point in Australian television where, and I'm hoping that it will be the case, and I see it, where we're no longer asking for permission to come into the, into the room, that we have the skills and um, experience and the... Um, the stories to come forward and be included into the conversation and be a part of the story making processes and be part of the kind of the new wave of television that we're seeing with the likes of Redford Now and Clever Man and, and so um, uh, black comedy and so I'm really excited to see hopefully where that leads not everybody is okay with that unfortunately it's almost like oh don't let's let's not talk about that elephant in the room let's not talk about our misrepresentation let's not talk about adhering to archaic narratives or stereotypes but i would love to see in australian television or more of a challenge with that mentality and to be honest with ourselves about ourselves about where we are, are at as a collective and what we can do individually and also as part of a production company and as a part of an ensemble to um, you know start start breaking down those walls yeah no I wholeheartedly agree yeah. and I would love to see an embracing of women who do not look like a size six 
Yeah. Because the amount of times I get told I'm too fat or I need to lose weight is uncomprehensible. And it's almost as if, if and the pressure, and I, whether whatever, whatever uh, demographic you belong to, as a woman, there's almost these unrealistic expectations that your genetic DNA has to match this particular genetic DNA. And her and I do, her and I do not match up. Your aesthetic is based upon a different genetic makeup and my, my body and my experience is gonna look entirely different. I mean, my father, my mother is Wagatha and Yamaji on my grandmother's side and Noongar Gija on my grandfather's side. My father is Etowah Cherokee, Blackfoot and African American. Now, do you think that <laughs> with all of that beauty and that um, you know history and the and the you know the aesthetic look of our women in my culture on both sides of the continent of the world will look like a size six blonde hair, blue eyes with you know you know particular petite frame? No. And I would, in order to do that, I would have to starve myself. So I need, I would love to see less pressure from networks studios and executives putting telling women that they need to lose weight because actors are not models yeah, and emma, emma thompson is was very much at the forefront when she recently you know perhaps i'm misconstruing this but and, and paraphrasing but basically when one of the younger actresses was on a project she was working on was told to lose weight she you know literally confronted the producer and said don't ever talk about her weight to her again and if you ever tell her to lose weight again i will walk away from this project so i would love it's we need women like that of that particular caliber and women in roles of authority helping to nourish and encourage women of different sizes on our screen and not being uncomfortable and saying oh you can be the fat and funny one or you know and if you can be the yeah. romantic lead if you're this particular show. and this is not to negate anybody who is a size six i'm just saying this is a particular cardboard cut out that we almost have to all fit into and we don't yes, because we have yeah. i have boobs i mean i remember one time almost thinking that i had to you know i was you know on soup diets i was you know going hard at the gym and um i honestly remember thinking to myself and saying this to a particular colleague maybe i should have a breast reduction and he just was like why would you say that i was like oh they're too big and i was <laughs> and then he goes do you know when you say that it's almost like you spit in the face of god and say i don't like what you've given me and then it just caused me to be funny and go, oh, yeah, um, no, I shouldn't. I, I just thought they're just too big. My thinking, perception of myself was based upon a low self-esteem and self-worth because I was making a comparison with my body to a different body that looked very different to mine and that I could, was never, ever going to be and I could ne not adhere to, so I almost felt disappointed. Oh, yeah. And so I had a lot of self-loathing and going, oh, but I'm not fat, oh, I can't fit into the designer's dress, I'm not a sample size, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. And, and it, I think we need to encourage a lot more conversation about body, conver about um, body embracing uh, our different bodies and yeah. about body confidence. And I don't see enough of that because I see a lot, lot of actresses go through extreme dieting and it's very, very disturbing and it's a lot uh, to do with the pressures to stay young and to stay thin. thin. Yeah. You know, even with augmenting with the Botox and I was like, what have you done? You've changed your beautiful face. Like, I, people say, oh, Sharina, that's very well to say that you're, because you're 28, you're in your 20s, you can, you know, I go, I really grew up in a culture where I saw a lot of my old aunties. I was gathered by a lot of women and I really relish seeing women age because I didn't actually think women get more beautiful. And my mother to me is one of the most beautiful women in the world because she's so confident in who she is. And she doesn't give two hoots if you like her or not. She's not, I'm not here to please you. I know who I am and I'm quite okay with who I am. Sure, I've got a lot of work to be doing in, on myself, but I like myself and what you think of me doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> 
and I don't give two shits if you don't like me. So fucking, so fucking what? I don't care. Don't fucking like me. I don't like you either. <laughs> it's okay not to be liked. We live in this society now where we almost are on edge and anxious to get a like on Facebook or social media, or whatever it is, to be liked all the time that we are so afraid to show our authentic selves. And I know that there's an augmented reality on television. I know there's almost a heightened world with drama. But it's almost like I would love to see more authenticity across the board. No, I agree. I, yeah. And, you know, I do feel to a degree when it does do that. It does deliver on that. Oh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. And that's why I think everyone loves the show. And, for it, and it's got such a huge fan base because it is so relatable. Well, I even remember very recently an actress told me, or well, maybe um, I reached for a brownie at the dessert, and oh my goodness, how many times, if you're ever in a film set, the actresses will always have this sort of subconscious or un unconscious, you know, bias towards dessert. That oh, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have dessert, or oh, I, oh, it's chocolate cake, or what's a brownie? Like, no, no, I'm never ever, I'm not going to have dessert because there's almost this mm. fear or pressure to stay a particular. And look, you have to. Depends on the character, you know, and it depends on, you know, if you're having to fit into your costume, right? The thing is with those with those costumes, if, it, if you got bigger because of catering, you go, can I just have the next size up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I do. It's I just like, sucky <laughs> And um, I remember an actress saying to me, Oh, maybe you shouldn't eat that. And I just picked up a brownie and I just had been craving. And she doesn't know. I don't, I'm don't. i not here to make comment or judgment on her. Yeah. She's not here to make comment or judgment on me. But what, at that moment, it's really important that we create a certain level of solidarity with women and especially around our relationship with food. And to not ever, ever make comment about a woman when she's eating. Because I remember um, getting... Yeah, getting the brownie and she said oh maybe you shouldn't be eating that and I just said you know at no point in time do you as a woman grown woman ever get to tell me as a grown woman what I should and should not eat and at that point she just said oh, oh. okay <laughs> all right it wasn't then. aggressive no it wasn't angry it wasn't shouting it was just going I'm just going to gently remind you that it's not okay to tell a woman what she can and cannot eat because we have enough fucking judgment already. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm the so one who's fucking guilty of this? Brownie. I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to bust my fat ass at that gym. I hopefully I see less wrinkles on my butt cheeks. <laughs> Actually, I've got to stop saying fat ass, like beautiful dairy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to pack with my girlfriends that we have no negative connotation or word association about our bodies when we're around each other and that is empowering so that what we have to do is empower one another and uplift one another rather than making a comment about how much food they're eating or what they're eating yeah. and certainly if there's a the relationship regarding you know i'm no nutritionist but if there's a relationship with um people have very different relationships with food or if it becomes an unhealthy relationship, you can gently say, you know, maybe have a conversation if you are in a position to do so. But sometimes it's best to keep your mouth shut. fucking shut. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have something nice to say, don't say, say it, at it at all. all. That's what your mind teaches you. Yeah, it's important. And, um, you know, I wish, I wish people had enough um, um, cohesiveness in that and collectiveness about you know, encouraging one another, empowering one another. But in order to go back to your question about what I wish people asked, hmm, I just wish people asked for the truth. <laughs> you know, instead, I know you've got questions and you have to kind of, um, I wish, but what I, what I don't get asked, or what I don't see enough of is transparency. Yeah, I, I just, I think on both ends. And I think we have highly edited versions of ourselves that we present on the red carpet. But really, you know, when I get home, I want to take my shoes off, be in my robe, my PJs, no makeup on, and have a cup of tea in hand, or maybe a book, you know, yeah. like, I love reading. So I think what I would love to see less predictable questions, and it's certainly less focus on only what women are wearing. And I understand it's a platform for that. 
but not, there's more to that than that, that the, the conversations that can be had. Hey, what organizations are you involved in? And it create, can create an opportunity, create a platform for other conversations, other dialogues. And people certainly want to, you know, have a, not think about it, maybe have a glass of wine, a cup of tea or whatever, um, and watch the logies and see and make comment and judge. Them. We've all been there, we've all done that, right? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Oh, imagine, no. <laughs> but, you, you know, but, um, you've been, like, today you've been a great example of that where we have gone left of centre with our questions today and we haven't asked about, you know, we've asked different things and you've been so insightful in the things that you've shared and it's given you a platform to talk about something that's different from mm. aesthetics mm. or what someone's wearing or, mm. you know, what they like to do on the weekend. It's mm. been a really great, like, I know mm. that the fans will love to have this different chat and, that's what these sessions are all about. Mm -hmm. So thank you because it's been really eye-opening, really inspiring, and I feel motivated. I'm like, what can I go? What cause can I go out and yeah. buy? <laughs> I'm so inspired right yeah, now. And that cause is purely <laughs> to be more authentic and truthful to yeah. yourself about yourself. And I see, um, unfortunately, a lot of competition whereby everyone's trying to get onto that. We well, I don't even know what that was. Like, do you remember that weird last year they had that? Um, you stepped into this on this kind of circular platform. Oh, the dress whirly thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was just weird. Is it like it's a three sixty cam thing? I'm yes. Like, I'm like, ain't nobody I don't gonna see me any men getting up on that. <laughs> I, if if we're making women get up on that and twirl and having to kind of be scrutinised to the nth degree as if she has a bit of muffin top of back fat. <laughs> Then I want to see what, well, you know, the kind of same level of cr critical eye with the men. We don't do that no. with the men. And it should a little, be a little bit more equal, don't you? Well, think? I'll make sure tomorrow night in the red carpet, I will not make you twirl. <laughs> I promise. I'm, I'm, I'm twirling, darling. <laughs> I promise I won't make you twirl. But I may ask you to pull your dress up to see if you've got bare feet. <laughs> Not on the red car, but I can't because I'm. I'll probably be standing next to Katrina or Pamela, and I'm just even at five eight. I'm going to still feel a little bit like sure. shorter, especially you know? next to Kat and, and Pam. They're like so. And tall. then I forget that Katrina Kate Atkinson is standing next to me. She's like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> oh, poor Kate. I'm, like, I'm in heels, right? And I'm five eight, and all my sisters are very tall, and my father is a very tall man, six foot three. But I'm sure my mum is so beautiful, five foot five, and she goes, Sharina, the best things come in small packages, which I do. And um, and she goes, um, <laughs> you often tease my elder sister, and we'll be like, you know, I know that you're up there, just remember where your guts is, Gage. Oh my God, you with my eyes, I like it. She just, you know, tease my mum. But um, my mum will often says, you know, my art, you know, I've got Dax disease, my ass is too close to the ground. <laughs> the best things come in small packages so yeah. it, they do but look tomorrow I'm wearing a really I will tell you who I'm wearing because I'm very excited because I'm wearing this wonderful new and we'll talk about it more tomorrow new in, up and coming indigenous designer called Lynn Al Young she's Ghanai and Wurundjeri and she is uh, from uh, Victoria and she's designed she's worked with me to design a dress which represents my grandmother's country from Wonga the country, so it's all desert country, see? And it's the most beautiful colours. It's kind of encapsulates some of the spin effects in the desert and just everything that is beautiful in a desert country. So from the blue skies to that beautiful red earth and, and brown ochres and beautiful yellows as well that you see. You know, oh, wow. Sun. So I'm very, very honoured and, and excited to be wearing her tomorrow. And she does it, she all hand, hand paints it and it's all in silk. Wow. Yeah. I've, when As soon as I wore the yellow, because I'd just seen um, Beauty and the Beast, right? I was like, I'm a black belle, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Beauty and the Beast, except I won't fall in love with an animal. <laughs> I don't know. No, 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 no. You don't know who you're going to meet on the red carpet yet. <laughs> oh, two and twelve. Like, like... You, you don't know who the new beast could be. You don't know. But it's a literally an incredible work of art. So I just keep thinking. Well, to I am. I'm excited. To, I'm, I'm so excited to see it. I'm so excited to chat to you on the red carpet oh, tomorrow thank night. You. Thank you so much. This thank is Serena's first Facebook Live. Yeah. So thank you. You've done amazing. <laughs> and um, we'll let you go back to the Logies party. And we'll I chat. We'll I chat to you tomorrow. Just remember, guys, live on the Facebook 
uh, on the Facebook, on the Foxtel Facebook on page. The Foxtel Facebook page. Red carpet line. And we'll get to see Sharina's beautiful dress. <gasps> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>